So if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in data analytics, wanna be a data analyst or something of the sort. That was exactly me not too long ago and I wish I had more insight before diving in. That being said, I'm gonna go through the five biggest things that I wish I knew before becoming a data analyst. The first and probably the biggest thing is pay. The pay isn't totally bad, but it's probably the lowest paying job in the field of data. Salary ranges are pretty wide depending on things like location, company size, skill set, and years of experience. However, I have seen salary ranges from about $35,000 a year on the lower end up to about $100,000 a year on the higher end. Obviously, there are going to be some outliers like Google, Meta, Amazon, etc. But for the average person who's looking for the average data analytics job, this is the salary ranges that you're going to expect. I personally got pretty lucky and I ended up on the higher end of the spectrum. However, a lot of my friends did not get that much luck. The next point I want to touch on is responsibilities. As an analyst, depending on your company's size, your responsibilities can vary heavily. And I mean heavily. If you're working for a larger company with a bigger team, you can expect a more structured workflow with more rigid day-to-day -day tasks. With this route, you're probably going to have a specialty in a couple of years and you're going to be very comfortable increasing your efficiency in that specific niche. However, if you work for a smaller company, let's say a startup, your workload's going to be a little bit more messy and also a little bit more vague. For example, you might have to dip your hands and do some data engineering, some data science, some machine learning, or even some architectural modeling work. You might be working on a dashboard or reports for your stakeholders today with SQL and asked to do a more complex time series forecasting tomorrow for the sales team. In my opinion, it's just the way the world works. Most smaller companies tend to have a lower budget and tend to look for data analysts as their first hire, probably because the salary expectations are lower. However, if you're able to swallow the workload, keep your head up and keep going, I think the knowledge and experience you're going to get is going to make you an immensely valuable and versatile candidate in the future. This brings me to my next point, which is the need to constantly learn. Most of you might already know this if you're interested in the field of data, but to those of you who don't, you're probably going to be learning something new every other day, week, or month. This is purely because of how fast technology has grown and also how dependent our careers are to the technology in terms of scalability and efficiency. It just seems like every other day there is a new tool, library, or framework that gets released that's just slightly better than the previous version, which encourages you to make the switch. So if you're interested in entering the field of data, just make sure you get used to learning curves and hopefully you'll learn to enjoy them. I also think it's important to note that it's okay to not know everything. In fact, when I first started, I barely used SQL, I didn't have any experience with Power BI tools, and I also hardly ever used Excel and Google Sheets. After some time and a lot of guidance, I got the hang of the basics and progressed from there. Depending on your job, you might even have to learn some programming languages like Python or R. However, this is a good thing because these languages will help you out a lot. I think as long as you have a positive mindset and you're open to learning, you're gonna do great. The next thing I want to point out is the importance of soft skills. Back when I was first applying for jobs, everyone was stressing out on the importance of technical skills that they completely overlooked uh, soft skills entirely. I was told to go do leak code, understand pivot tables, and memorize SQL queries. And although some of the advice might be good, I think there's a better approach you can take. Yes, don't get me wrong, the technical aspect is immensely important. In fact, it's the foundation of all the work you're going to be doing. However, if you don't get the soft skills down, you might be wasting all your effort in the end. Remember, one of the biggest roles of a data analyst is to communicate those insights that you derive to your stakeholders so that they can take action. So if you hate presenting in front of dozens of people or find it hard to clearly communicate your thoughts to others, I would recommend focusing on those skills first. The last point I want to touch on is that this career, for most people at least, is just a stepping stone. From my experience and understanding, most people choose to become a data analyst because it's the easiest way to break into the field of data. Other data jobs might require years of experience in the field or a more technical background with higher education. Data analyst jobs tend to have the lowest requirement in terms of education, skill level, and years of experience in the field. In fact, I've met several people who don't have bachelor's or undergrad degrees, yet are exceptional data analysts who've chosen to pivot to other careers because they've gained enough experience. Now, for those of you who are just getting started, this might not mean as much to you. However, in a couple of years when you've got enough experience, you might just choose to break out to a different career like data science or data engineering. I personally don't think this is a bad thing because it leaves a lot of room for newer data analysts to excel in the field and also maintains a high demand for analytics jobs. If I was in your shoes, I would use the information from this video to decide if this is what I wanted to do for at least the next couple of years. If you're looking for a six-figure starting salary fresh out of school, there definitely are opportunities within the field of data. However, those opportunities might be very slim and also very competitive, so you might have better chances elsewhere. Maybe you were considering software engineering as an alternative career path, and hopefully now you have enough time and also information to make that decision. Me personally, I think I would have made the same decision because I believe, at least in the technical field, this is the best job suited for me. Maybe sometime in the future I'll pivot careers and swallow my own words. However, right now I'm very happy with my career choices. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I try my best to read every single comment and respond as best as I can. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.